Hi, Mark. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Excellent. I'm doing a lot better now. Yeah. <laughs> How's the recovery been? Uh, it's been it's been going great. It's been going great. Um, it killed me for six months not to do anything, um, but now I'm back training and it feels feels great. It feels unbelievable to for for a guy like me to kind of just not do anything. It just it put me in a tailspin and. Now I'm back and got my head out of my wherever it was, and now I'm back. So, what, yeah. what do you do, I mean, being in the position that you were in? What do you do to keep yourself focused, to keep yourself back on track? Um, you know, to focus is really not an issue for me. Is when I when I get something, when when I have something scheduled. I mean, focus is not not an issue. Um, it's going too hard is the issue for me. Overtraining and and trying to like um, get the maximum amount I can in a day because between not only just training I teach as well and I have a wife and four kids between all their events and all the stuff that I need to do with the gym and training on top of that it just it fills my day and I just try to be the best that I can in everything that I do and it's just hard you know so um, so overtraining would actually be the the thing for me that would be the hardest is overtraining getting some rest how has it helped you uh, not just train just to train, but actually train for a purpose right now? How has that helped you? Oh, dude, it's helped, it's helped me just to focus in, like, have a have a person in mind now, you know, and, and really hone in my skin, my skills to be able to, to be able to, like, really think about Tim Boach and what he does and, and how to counter that and how he would attack me and how his game plan would be towards me. So... It actually makes me wa makes me want to train harder. Okay. Yeah, but um, makes me want to be smarter at the same time. We were with you down at Rain that day when the uh, fight was really just getting sealed up. And I'm not gonna lie, Mark, you were a little heavier yes. that day. <laughs> um, let's talk. Let's talk about yeah. Well, let's talk about what you've been doing since. And, and like you just said, the motivation, knowing it's Tim specifically. Yeah. What elements do you think you have to train in preparation for him? Yeah. So when you saw me, Karen, I was actually very big, and um, and that's that was the tailspin I was talking about. Um, kind of went in depression, and it's kind of like one of one of uh, Austin Powers' characters in his movie, <laughs> Fat Bastard. Yeah, I ate because I was sad, and I was sad because I ate, you know. And that's that was the thing. I just it was it was just bad. But but you know, I think adversity is the dust that polishes a diamond, and. You know, it, it's just it's it's a bump in the road for me, and and that's part of my story. And and now I'm back on the horse, and I'm riding again. So, um, so yeah. So when you saw me, I was I was just coming, get, just getting back on the horse actually, and riding. You know, so um, having an uh, having an adversity-stricken year, it was really really hard for me because the year before that, um, I fought four times. Actually, two years, before, two years, I fought four times, and I was fighting regularly, and it just was hard for me to to not be able to fight, and not be able to compete, and not train for six months. So it was it was very hard for me. And so now, when it goes, comes time to face Tim, we know what his skill set is, but you know, what have you been doing specifically in preparation to face him? Yeah, so I've been um, been really concentrating on my wrestling. Um, been really doing a lot of jujitsu as well. Um, my striking, I've always need to hone in my skills with striking, but most importantly is being able to, to, to get the game, game plan down without, without giving too much away. Um, you know, I want, I want to be able to transition between striking to wrestling, wrestling to grappling, or my patented ground and pound. So, uh, so yeah, so I've been, I've been really honing in on my transitions between striking and, and uh, takedowns and, and being able to look for what I want on the ground. So, um, been doing that a lot and uh, really concentrating on my striking. And I know you and Jake have such a great bond, Ellenberger. How good do you think he is? How do you think he's going to do against Rory? I think he's going to do unbelievable. I'm not biased or anything, but <laughs> you know, I think he's going to do great. Just the fact that um, I have a guy that has the same mentality as I do, that trains hard and, and is very focused in, in becoming a world champ. Because that's what he wants to be, and he puts he puts everything into that. And um, I'm so excited for him. Um, the fact that he left his hometown to come train at Rain, and for him to for him to kind of just 
um, forsake everything that he knows and then just have faith and know that it was going to work out here at Rain. Just that alone, I love the guy, you know, but his work ethic on top of that, it's unbelievable. Mark, yeah. is there one thing you can point to? Uh, you talked about the dark days of Munoz. So. Yeah. So, um, you know, is there one thing that you can point to or one moment that kind of pushed you over the hill as far as the depression, as far as the, the eating? Is there one thing that you think to? It's like, yeah, that was it. That was, that's what clicked. Yeah, so the when I lost the fight in the fashion that I lost, um, and it was, it was actually a struggle to actually make weight as well because I couldn't run. Um, and getting into that fight, I, I actually saw myself on fight day and I'm like, oh my gosh, this does not look like me, you know, and, and it just, it, it threw me for a loop then. So then when I lost in the fashion I lost, it kind of just, when I lost, it just, that was, that was the, that was kind of the pivotal point right there. And so after that, it took me about a week to kind of, it's like, what are you doing? Dust off the cobwebs. I mean, just, just stop stop thinking about it and just move on it's just a bump and roll but it was really really hard for me um after that week the doctor said you you broke your fourth and fifth metatarsal you might be out for a year and then that's the straw that that was the that was the straw that broke the camel's back right there you know and i just like i i i was like man you know i i can't believe this is happening to me and prayed a lot and had a lot of people praying for me and you know that's uh you know I, I really went to through it right there when the doctor told me that i wouldn't uh, that'd be out for a year right but what was, was there a moment where where that washed away where you realized that you when was there a moment when you put all that behind you like a yeah. clicking or was it a gradual process of just getting healthy again and getting a fight under or yeah. getting a fight announced or was it a was there a moment where it all clicked it was a it was a gradual process because I tried to get back on the mat, just try to do something, and I was always forcing myself to get back on my feet and, and either walk or, you know, I would take off the boot and try to walk, and my wife just, she's like, put the boot back on, what are you doing? That's why we have like, wives. Yes, yes, Christy, she is amazing. Um, she just said, put the boot back on, you, you can't do anything, and I was hitting mitts with the boot on. I was just like, <laughs> she's like, stop, what are you doing? And I'm just, it was a gradual process for me. It was really, really hard for me. Um, and uh, and the doctor had to really just be on my case. Hey, you got to rest it. You know, you got to ice it. You got to you got to uh, make sure you're doing everything you can to come back sooner, not later. So um, so yeah, it was a gradual process. Is it safe to say you feel like a different fighter? <laughs> yeah, I do. I think you're gonna see. Um, I think you see a way different fighter in me. Um, probably you're gonna see even a more hungry. Uh, fighter, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this fight for sure. And they say adversity builds characters. So. Yes, it does. It really does. So you traveled to the Philippines as an ambassador of sorts for the UFC. You've got a UFC gym now, right, as well? <laughs> and, uh, there's talks. Okay. <laughs> there's talks. There's talks. So, uh, so yeah, I went to the Philippines, and and um, I have a lot of love out there. I really do. And um, I love the Philippines. Of course, I'm Filipino and 100% pure. Bread Filipino, so I'm I'm pretty happy about what's going on over there with MMA, and I truly want to be that that ambassador representing for them, not only here in the states but all, also over there um, in the Philippines. So, so yeah, so there's talks of the UFC gym. Um, I'm definitely going to have visits to the Philippines more um, more frequently throughout the year now, and working with them to uh, to further advance MMA and wrestling. Yeah. You just talked about your Filipino heritage. You're a very proud Filipino yes, fighter. Yes, I am. Another one that just fought last Saturday was Nunito Donaire. Mm -hmm. Yes. He lost the decision to... Rigando. Yeah. What words uh, would you have for him right now? You know, I just... Adversity is the dust that polishes a diamond. And adversity is... Um, definitely builds character. You know, um, champions aren't measured by how many wins they have, but how many times they pick themselves up after a loss. He's definitely a champion. He's definitely going to get back on the horse again. And if I had words for him, like this is not going to derail him for what he wants to be in, in the sport and how he wants to live his legacy. So um, I view him as just an unbelievable athlete, and everybody does too. And he's definitely going to come back and be a champ again. And another boxer, that's you know, Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you feel like is that for Pacquiao? Um, you know, he's he's definitely going to come back. He wants to come back. He's a he's a fighter, and um, he had a lot on his plate. He really did. I mean, between 
between the singing, between the <laughs> acting, between <laughs> between the uh, yeah, wife. Be, yeah, <laughs> wife and congressman and like all this stuff, like he still fought, you know, and I think he just needs to, you know, schedule his priorities, not prioritize his schedule. So I mean it's it's an ongoing thing for him because he's a super mega star, you know, and um he just needs to he needs to just prioritize his life. And I think when that happens, he's definitely going to get back on track. Seeing all those, seeing all the stuff those two fighters go to, through yeah. day in and day out, does that motivate you more to be a better fighter and a better person? You know, just seeing everything that goes on, uh, I think we as fighters, we're actually put in the, in the kind of like this, <laughs> you know, spotlight. yeah, in the spotlight and people see us. And, and I think it's um, character is actually revealed. You know, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that, I wouldn't say sports build, builds character. I think character is revealed through sport. So it does, it does make me, make me feel blessed that I'm actually in the position I'm at so that I can actually um, impact another person and leave an imp a lasting impact on them and leave my legacy that way. So, um, so yeah, I've, I've, regardless of if I see other athletes or not, if I didn't have an athlete or or someone say, "Hey, Mark, you'd be good at doing something and so and so," or wrestling, getting getting into wrestling or getting into MMA, I don't know where I would be. You know, I'd probably be coaching somewhere, which is not a bad profession. I think I'm going to coach after I'm done. But um, now that I'm in the spotlight, I can actually share my beliefs and share my share. You know, what I believe um, is is how to how to impact the community and how to impact um, somebody in a positive way so so that's that's what I love you know because I go on and I do anti-bullying speeches to different high schools and and I talk to different kids about at being at risk and they they're not they're not at risk you know they their choices definitely impact their future and their life choices definitely mold and shape them to the person they are today and tomorrow and in the future so I go I go around and and tell them these things and it makes, I make sure that I leave my legacy that way, because at the end of the day, people aren't going to notice what what you say or what you do to them, but they're going to make they're going to remember how you make them feel. So, Dana was talking the other day about uh, how the UFC is doing much more internationally. Has there been any, any more talk about you doing possibly coaching tough in the Philippines? Uh, there was talks about that earlier, um, and you know, with the Philippines, um, they they had to get things some things um kind of worked out in the philippines and then brazil popped up and then boom brazil happened so the philippine is on the horizon and um there is talks about the, the ufc going to the philippines in 2014 so for a card yeah and, and i'm definitely going to be on that card so have to yeah oh, yeah i'm gonna raise some stuff about that but uh but yeah so um yeah, so there's talks about that, but I haven't heard about a tough. So um, when I do, I'll be sure. Call. Yeah, I'll give you a call. <laughs> yeah, somebody will be talking about it. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys.